G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we look ahead to this week's upcoming preliminary finals and also take a look back at two, I was going to say good setting finals, but they were pretty underwhelming, weren't they? So we'll go through all that and more and then I'll give you my tips for these upcoming prelims. Before we get stuck into that though, don't forget to check out our friends at manscaped.com who are offering 20% off their products with the discount code use of TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. So make sure you head to their website after this video and go check out what they've got on offer and get that 20% off. First of all, let's look at the semi-final between Richmond and St. Kilda on Friday night. And this game went more or less the way I expected it. The Tigers really set the game up early with a five goal to two opening term. And from then on, we're never headed. It was a more or less a cruisy sort of a victory for the Tigers. The Saints did fight back hard and weren't under man, but laying just 38 tackles really shows that they couldn't really clamp down on Richmond in the way that they needed to. They certainly didn't disgrace themselves. Richmond are obviously a champion side and St. Kilda had a bit of their own adversity with guys like Ryder, Carlisle and Long out. And then of course, Josh Battle came back in, but spent a bit of the game injured as well. It was definitely a respectable effort, but they're just a little bit far off that top layer of contending teams this year. Overall, this season has to be considered a raging success. They went 10 and seven. They won a final under their new coach. And I think that just about justifies an A plus grade for them. The good thing for the Saints is how many of the good players are actually quite young. They got such a good, strong core of young players coming up. Jack Steele won their best and fairest. He's young, Seb Ross, Jack Billings. They didn't get too much out of Gresham this year, who's another great talent. Hunter Clark and Nick Caulfield, amongst others. There is a lot of upside to come from this young Saints team. We'll talk a little bit about Richmond shortly, but I want to get into the Geelong and Collingwood game first. Now, this is probably one of the more one-sided finals we've seen in quite some time. In fact, the score was at one point 80 plays seven. In fact, Collingwood only had a single scoring shot at halftime with the single goal on the board. After all the emotion and glory of their upset win in Perth last week, the Pies simply couldn't back up that effort. Geelong were red hot from the opening minute and Collingwood clearly dropped their heads fairly early. Focusing on the Pies for a second, they're going to look back at this season as a bit of a write-off. It never really got going for them. They had a great round one, and then pretty much everything after that was sort of injury-affected, and they slumped and sort of slid their way into eighth spot in the end. Obviously, winning a final in week one in that fashion was a great effort, but I think to back that up with this semi-final, which was really, really quite pathetic, is going to leave a bitter aftertaste in the fans' mouths. They certainly had their injury woes this year, but on the whole of it, with a side with this much talent to finish eighth and exit in week two, you've got to probably grade them around about a D. While they have had their adversity at times, the football was definitely a little bit disinterested, and for that reason, they could have done so much better. Will this final have psychological scarring on this group like, big final losses have to other teams in the past. I'm not so sure. I'd back the Pies in to come back strong and regroup simply because they're a experienced final side who know what they're capable of. They should just be able to write this one off as long as they deal with it early. Now we'll talk about the actual prelims and this is only the second time in the last six seasons I believe that the actual top four to finish the home and away season are our final four teams in the prelims as well. For me these games are a legitimate toss up. First of all we got Port Adelaide and Richmond at Adelaide. Adelaide Oval on the Friday night and obviously we last saw Port Adelaide in week one of the finals when they were too strong for the Cats in week one. Despite going 14 and 3 throughout the season it probably wasn't until this first week one final where they won against the Cats where people started respecting them as a genuine favorite to win the flag. Part of the impressive part about it was that they overcame a 10 goal turnaround from when they'd last played Geelong earlier this season in Queensland to beat them by a couple of goals in Adelaide. Obviously the mindset was a lot more switched on this time around but we've also seen a much stronger Port Adelaide side towards the back end of this season, I reckon. In particular, that midfield is really firing. Rockliffe was BOG for them in that first game of the finals, and with Wines and Boak in the form they're in, that is a quite a dynamic midfield group. Now, you could say they got a little bit lucky against Geelong, where Hawkins was completely off his game, and he was missing every set shot that he could possibly get his hands on, but the defenders were also forcing him wide, and the chances he were getting weren't that great anyway. What will help them going into this game is the knowledge that they beat Richmond not that long ago here at Adelaide Oval 2. However, Richmond are regaining six Premiership players 
from the team that last played Port and, and that actually amounts to 11 flags combined. We touched on Richmond before but they had a pretty clinical performance last week against the Saints. They pressured the Saints as they always do. They capitalised on their mistakes and then whenever St Kilda threatened to take control they just scored often enough to level that out. I've been saying this for a while but I'm very wary of Richmond as a team that's timing their run well for finals. They've got Tom Lynch back in now obviously and with all those other reinforcements unfortunately I am very wary of Richmond this week. I'd love the pair to win. I'll be wearing whatever teal clothing I have to watch the game, but unfortunately, I think Richmond are going to kick into gear and upset the pair to win by nine points. Let's have a look at the next prelim final, and it's Brisbane versus Geelong, the top two teams from the home and away season last year. Now, as I alluded to earlier, everything really clicked for the Cats against the Pies pretty much from the opening minute, and that really snapped a little bit of a form slump from them where they've turned up some fairly indifferent form. Statistically, you couldn't really be more dominant than they were. As I said, at one point, the score was 80-7, to and the disposals by the end of it was 360 odd to just 200. Now, Geelong historically don't love a week one final. They lost their last year as well, and then bounced back with a good semi-finals win, and then got undone by Richmond in a prelim. What I will say, though, is the Dangerfield forward move last week really proved a masterstroke, where he swung forward, he crashed packs, he also impacted goals. He provided an alternate target to Tom Hawkins, and he managed to kick four for himself, including two from the boundary. If he can back that up for the final two weeks of the year, that has been a huge hole that the Cats need to plug. On top of that, skipper Joel Selwood got through the game unscathed with his finger injury, collected 14 possessions, so he should be well and truly ready to go for this prelim. Now, the Lions are another side who have had a two-week break after their emotional and massive win against the Tigers in week one. On top of the Tigers being the reigning premiers and in some people's eyes, the genuine premiership favorites, I think breaking their hoodoo was a huge psychological boost. I think it had been something like 15 games in a row where Richmond had beaten them. Watching the game, there were periods where Richmond was just dominating play and forcing the ball inside 50, but Brisbane was just absorbing the pressure and repelling every attack. Thankfully for them, on top of absorbing the pressure, they actually managed to score the other way as well, and it capped off what was a very impressive victory. So going into this game, the Lions will be full of confidence that they can match up with anyone. So going into this game, Brisbane will be full of confidence that they can match up with any team, which was more or less the last question mark I had for them. The last time they played the Cats was back in round six of this season up in Sydney in a neutral territory where Geelong ended up doing them in. But a lot has happened since then. And of course, Brisbane will be playing this game at their home ground. Now in the second last round of the year, last year, these two teams played off for a top of the table clash and of course Brisbane famously won by one point with Lincoln McCarthy taking a stunning grab to win the game at the end. But this game is also super super hard to call. Very evenly matched teams as far as I'm concerned. I think I'm going to have to go with the home team who just did the Richmond Tigers in two weeks ago on their home deck on a Saturday night in front of their home crowd. I think the Lions are going to secure a grand final berth and win this game by four points. All right so that really sets up a grand final of Richmond versus Brisbane the following Saturday night. Personally, I can see any combination of teams winning these prelims. This is very evenly matched. It's a great top four, and in some ways, I'm pretty glad that this top four made it through. We will be live streaming the Brisbane versus Geelong game on Saturday night here on the True Footy YouTube channel, and then the following week, we will definitely be doing a grand final day live stream as well. As always, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Who do you think is going to win? What's your preferred grand final if you're a neutral? And of course, don't forget to come along and join the stream when the game kicks off. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.